the um, welcome, welcome, and thank you for joining us for another Wednesday morning for teachings of the Baal Shem Tov. And um, I wanted to share with you a song of the Baal Shem Tov a little bit later on, and also tell you that the Baal Shem Tov's teachings are ones that are very, very helpful in the time that we're in right now. That the, one of the fundamental teachings of the Baal Shem Tov is that wherever your mind is, that's where you are. And perhaps like never before in history, could we get present to it like we could get present to it right now, realizing that how powerful that is, especially now that we've been, these months, our lives have been changed and so much of everything that how we knew it to be has changed. And thus, it, 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 in, the, in the perspective that we are naturally, it could be filled with pain and fear and anxiety and, and uncertainty and all that kind of stuff. And that's, I get it, that's the way that it is, okay? But if you take the Baal Shem Tov's teaching to mind, that wherever uh, your mind is, that's where you are, literally, I mean literally, uh, then that means that despite the circumstances that we're in, we actually could choose in which way we want to be present in our minds, in the events that we're in. And that's really, really super key. And, uh, you know, some of you have, may have heard this um, uh, anecdote of the, uh, the, the story of a person who has been asked that they should walk a 10 mile distance with a paper bag, it's 10 pounds. And um, you, the first reaction one would have is walk 10 pounds with a paper bag that's uh, holding it, that's not easy. 10 miles, especially if someone's not accustomed to that. But if that exact same person were told that, by the way, those 10 pounds are diamonds and they all, all belong to you, if you make it there without dropping them, not only would that person most likely have no problem carrying the pounds, but also the state of mind and joy that they would be in would be over the top, of course, right? Everything in their lives just changed. So, having said that, the same is true about everything. The only thing that changed in that story was the perspective, which changed the attitude about the exact same baggage, you know? And, um, and that's something that when we learn the teachings, as we're going to now, that when we learn the teachings of the Baal Shem Tov, so um, we get to be uh, present in the situation that we're in in a different way. And here is one of them that I, I believe to be very relevant, okay? So there was a great, uh, great, a great sage of in Jewish history, whose name was Rabbi Sadia Gon. And uh, you could look it up, and today you have the possibility to look up Sa'adja Gaon. Sa'adja would be S A A D I A Gaon G A O N. So you could read about him, fascinating a leader of the Jewish people. And in his writings, he says that you should know that the most fundamental principle of, for the purpose of why mankind was created is in order to break its negative characteristics. AKA, in order to break its natural characteristics. And let me explain what that means. That means that unless we work on ourselves, then there's not much of a difference between us and regular animals. In fact, unless we work on ourselves, animals are not bad, they can't be bad. But unless we work our, on ourselves and we get present to who we are in this combination of body and soul, then we're more likely to go down a path that's much more animalistic. That's not why we're here. The reason why we're here is we're given the possibility to take that path, but then we're given a game, so to speak. And the game is to engage that side of us that comes naturally equipped with all these shortcomings and comes naturally equipped with reactive behavior that's not aligned with our higher self. And then we're brought into this world in order to break the negativity, but more importantly, transform the energy into one where it doesn't go south, it doesn't go south. 
So the, 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 the idea of breaking the negativity is a, a, is, a, uh, is, is a form of discipline. That whenever we have to break something, a habit of ours that's not good, a trait of ours that's not good, a reactive nature of ours that's not good, at first there's a, there's a, there's a concept of breaking it. It means it's no more. And that's actually what the Rabbi Sadji Gwam says. That's why we're here. That's the main purpose of why we're here, is for us to transform our nature. And through this process, through a human being making that choice, to transform their natural reactive nature to one that is aligned with Hashem, with one that is aligned with our Maker. So then, he says, this is, one then reaches something, this is such a, an amazing concept, Rabbi Taji Gon says, he says, or, or I'm sorry, that, 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 that yeah, he says that, um, that as a result of doing that, you, you, what you actually end up doing is you elevate your nature, which is called Tiv Acha, your nature. In the higher world, which is called world, also world in Hebrew means Olam. In Hebrew we say the word for world is Olam, which means world, but also means concealment. So even at the highest level of concealments, I mean, a little break from here, the reason why the world is referred to as a concealment is because the nature of everything that exists is number one, it's a concealment. What is it concealing? It's concealing the infinite force that at this very second is bringing it into being. I could talk about it. I can talk about it and even be present about it in my words. But to be present to that all the time, of course not. We wouldn't be able to be normal human beings if we were. There's something called concealment that takes place. And that concealment is the is the is the edifice for everything that exists in the, in the universe both physical and spiritual so in that concealment is where our nature occurs but hear me the nature that we have in our lower self actually has a source in our higher self is what is being said of the nature that we have in our lower self is sourced in our higher self let's get graphic let's say a person who struggles with food and uh, they have a, they just, they just love, they can't stop eating food, okay? So that's a nature that is, you know, animalistic. That has to be something that we got to get them to check, okay? So actually, when we work on ourselves, especially in the context of and in the perspective of that we're doing so to fulfill their mission that we're here for, which is to use our intelligence, which we're going to get to in a moment, to use the gift that Hashem has given us, the, the, the connection of body and soul, not just in a, uh, in, in, a, um, in, a, in, a, in a distant way, like our soul somewhere there, but actually integrating that synergy, that marriage in a way to the degree that it actually changes the nature of how and who we are. So the same person who perhaps today couldn't get, you know, had a favorite dish and, 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 and it was unhealthy for him and he just, you know, he just couldn't get over it, had actually a same exact desire for something spiritual that at this point because of the concealment it's manifesting itself in a behavior that's animalistic so because of the type of beings that we are we're intelligent beings we're here to generate a bond a synergy between our source and who we are in a practical and actual way in the way that it applies in our thoughts in our speech and in our action so our job that we begin with in order to be able to tap into that higher nature of us that actually desires what's great for us, that actually desires what fulfills our, satiates us even more than we can possibly imagine. But at this point, it manifests itself in a behavior that's animalistic. And, uh, and therefore, number, step number one, Rabbi Sadio Gon is saying is that we are here to transform that nature they, there are tools on how we do that number one is separation from it but that's a lot that's a different conversation but that's the point is we're here to transform it transforming a person who always loses their temper that's the, that's their job they have to they have to now work on their temper and um and they have to realize that that's that that's what they're that's what they're here for that's what hashem brought them into this world for. we're not animals we're humans, we're unique. We have possibilities to do things that when we do so and we engage that aspect of us, it's over the top. 
So uh, that's what really what we're here for. It begins with, in order for us to be present to our higher self, we have to overcome that part of ourself that otherwise goes south and very animalistic. To continue, the Baal Shem Tov then continues and says, this is what was said to Abraham. Just a little bit of background. Abraham, when he first uh, took upon himself the belief of monotheism, it wasn't like he had revelation at the time. He wasn't, uh, he wasn't exposed to prophecy like later on in the Torah. But rather, the first 75 years of his life, and, um, or, or whatever, the, the, or it's minus the three until he came to that conclusion, were dedicated to a belief system that was completely in faith and trust of the highest levels that one could possibly imagine. And he conducted his life as such. He saw the fact that everything is one force, and he integrated it. What would that look like if you really believe that? And he became... You know, he was a he was a it was a most loving person. His 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 tent was always open for guests. That was his trait because he saw that to be the he saw that to be the dominating factor of our creator and the fact that the creator is always giving. So he wanted to be and then when he's 75 years old, he has a prophecy. Where he has a prophecy where Hashem tells him, Lech lacha me'artzacha, go out of your land, and out of your birthplace. And until the, until the land that I'll show you. So in the physical story, what happens is he completely leaves everything that is part of his life to a place that he doesn't even know where he's going to go, going to. He's, going, he's being guided by Hashem, by in this prophecy. Wow, incredible faith that is happening over there. And yes, in the physical story, that's pretty amazing. But then there's another story going on. And the other story is a spiritual understanding, as we've shared many times here, that every pasuk and every verse and every uh, word in the Torah has multiple layers of meaning to it. And in the more spiritual meaning, <clears throat> what he's being told is, Lech lecha ma'artzacha, go outside of your land. The word artzacha, the word land, also has the same root in Hebrew as the word ratzan, which means will. So Avram is told, in other words, even though you're spiritual, even though you're wired in and you're doing it and you're doing everything to reflect, but now it's time to go out of your own will to a will that I will show you. Not just talking to Abraham, but talking to every one of us saying, in order for us to achieve the purpose of which we're here, number one, we have to be prepared to let go of our paradigm, our will. The Baal Shem Tov goes on, what does that mean? The will, the nature of what we are in. We all have different natures. We all come wired differently. We all come packaged differently. All of that, in order for us to be able to ascend to and engage the purpose of why we're here and a higher sense of self, is we have to be prepared to go outside of the nature. You know, the Shabbat is a canal, meaning that one should see to it to break the negative natures that are within us. By the way, the Rambam Maimonides goes into how a person actually steps that a person could take if they're having a hard time overcoming a particular ne negative nature. But, um, the, uh, but the concept is that that's, that, that's, that's the beginning of the process. When the base of go outside of the house of your father, in, in Kabbalah, the word father is referred to as Chachma. Chachma, because just like father brings a seed which develops eventually in, 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 into a baby, so the Chachma experience, the, <clears throat> the Chachma experience, which is the beginning of consciousness, which is when we have an epiphany, for example, what's called Chachma, in Kabbalistic terms, it's called your father or a father. So the idea is go outside of your consciousness of how you understand things now. The house of your father is go outside of the paradigm of your thoughts, of how you understand things, the narrative in which you live. And the intent here, <clears throat> that one should take to it to correct the negative thinkings, the negative thoughts that we have within us. Okay? 
So let's stop here for just for a second. What that means is um, that we have a narrative running in our head, and that narrative is, if left unchecked, it's going to be driven by whatever type of animal you are. Just to open this up a little bit more, for example, the, the, um, the Zohar goes into a lengthy conversation about the way we human beings look. It's amazing. I actually have a book that, um, I don't know where it is now, I think someone borrowed it several years ago, but I have a book that actually has different pictures of different, um, different, different types of animals. And it compares the, the human types of faces to different types of animals. And in fact, it shows you about cheekbones and the ears, all the different stuff. There's a whole bunch of different ones. And, uh, it, and it should, like, I, I remember the way that my face officially is like a lion, right? Like fits to the lion characteristics. So I, you know, then you got to look into it. And it's, it's, and it's all about what those negative traits are because that's the negative traits who we are. Meaning for a lion, it's not a bad to be a lion what he does. For, for any other animal, animals are not bad. Animals can't be bad. Okay? They're, they're not given free choice. But they have characteristics to them that sometimes are horrible. You know, and, uh, and you know, watching the jackals, you know, hunting is a horrible thing to watch. You know, eating animals alive. You know, at least the, the lion kills its prey, you know, at least for the, for the ones that I saw. So anyway, the point is that we all have different characteristics that we come wired with, and that's our nature. But the fact is that that is a beautiful nature. Whatever your nature is, a beautiful nature. But because you're living in a concealment, and because the way in which you, you start with is something called a concealment, therefore the, the fact is that naturally, if we do nothing about it, then the journey of our natural self, it will be self-oriented in whatever characteristic we are. And everybody's different in that regard. So the point is that each person is intended to find where it is that their weakness is. And what, and you know, I think most people know at least at first the areas where they can, they can be fixing up their characteristics. If you're, if you're not sure what your, weak, what your weakness is, if you're married, ask your partner. And I'm sure they can, uh, they can fill you in. No, don't do that. That may not be safe. <laughs> but either way, um, the point is that we all have that. We all have places within us that is broken. That's the purpose of why, that's the beginning of the purpose of why we're here. Meaning, in order for us to really fulfill our, the possibility of bringing heaven down to earth, starting within ourselves, it begins with breaking these characteristic traits that we're here to break. And uh, this is what it means. That uh, and from the house of your father, meaning you should know how to to purify a negative thought that comes from that space in order to elevate it. And as a result of that, you'll have the merit, you'll be blessed to ascend to the higher worlds, which I will show you, meaning I will show how your same nature how you have, how in the past it manifests itself in such a negativity, it, once you're ready to break that nature, once you're ready to break that negativity and open, once we are ready to, each one of us having our own uh, journey, each one of us having our own natural uh, negative traits within us, once we're ready to break that and to do what is needed for us to break that, then Hashem says, I will, take it to the, I will take it to the land that I will show you, meaning I'm going to show you how your own desire, your deepest desire, I'm going to show you what it looks like once, how, how the same exact concept, how, what it looks like in the higher self. Okay? And, um, and that's, a, that's a, 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 a very, very interesting, <laughs> a very, very interesting um, way of putting it, so to speak. You know, if you I just the, the, one of the thoughts that come to me is that um, people who who, uh, who make great transformations in their weight loss, you know, as you can tell, I that's one of my things I got to work with, right? So Baruch Hashem, we're working with that. But I'm, I'm, I'm I was very taken away by the ones that actually they get transformed and then they just have such an incredible like uh, oomph every day to get up and to work out and then all that kind of stuff, right? If you would have asked that same person 10 years earlier while they were sitting on the couch and they were 250 pounds overweight, 
if they could ever imagine that, you know, it may be difficult because, I mean, would they will be willing to give up their next big, most uh, enjoyable meal and in order to have that joy that they're experiencing now, even though that joy they're experiencing at that point, now that they're healthy, it's like over the top in comparison, right? But it, in order for that to take place, he had to do what exactly what the Baal Shem Tov just talked about. He said, you have, to, you have to break that negativity, that negative trait. And by doing so, especially in this case we're talking about, by doing so with the intention of serving the purpose of why we're here, which is in order to bring out the higher self, not just within ourselves, but within everywhere and everybody around us and lighting up the world to the times that we pray for where there will be no more wars and there will be no more hatred and jealousy, etc. And this is the beginning of that journey and it's never too late to begin. So uh, there you go. That's the teaching for today. If you have any questions or comments, we're happy to hear from you.